We can do this now. Our oh, suggestion has increased. Sometimes the most charming thing you can do is be reasonable in your requests. Could you tell me about one? Just one more interesting cryptid. The Insulindian Phasmid was great. I suppose you could use a break and I could use a distraction. One cryptid, like you said. One. This can't turn into some kind of cryptid extravaganza. We have things to do. Okay, Cam. Just one little cryptid promise. Are there any invisible cryptids? Hey, you promised you'd only ask about one Kim, cryptid. Kim, shut the fuck up. <laughs> they let you do more. But Kim, don't you want to hear about another cryptid too? <laughs> what <laughs> honor. <laughs> we don't ride with this. <laughs> we do what Something we please. in him breaks. Ah, oh, fuck it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Yo, <laughs> let's go in there. Kolda Mamadakwa can also be translated as a whisper, light and low. Kolda Mamadakwa. Itu mama tambien. <laughs> part A is how fascinating the creature is, and part yeah. B is the idiot that fucked up why we can't find more of them. Yeah. Was that? Could it be? The Calder Mama <laughs> No! No. Oh, no. Oh, no, Inland. Is it? I can't be doing with this. Is, is there a ringing? Oh, no. There seems to be an extremely high-pitched ring. Ultrasonic. Lena said it was very high-pitched, right? It's like something... Take Why are head. we slaves to memes? You didn't know or care, but now that you've heard about it, it's a thing. Listen closely first. There it is again. You are about to rediscover a long lost species. Yeah, 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 it's tinnitus. <laughs> that's, that's what it fucking is. It must be very close. Maybe, just maybe, it will come toward you. No, I don't hear the Koldomama d'Aqua, and neither do you. Of course he doesn't. He's deaf. <laughs> Move your head towards the sound. Oh no. The sound. It's moving away. Somewhere over there. Go after it. No, no, no. Please come back. Please, 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 please. This is how it starts, you know. And then you're just wandering the streets, list stopping every once in a while to listen, and then bursting into a run, and then telling it not to leave to come back. And then that's you forever now. You're that guy. The Hardy Boys told us exact, told us what really happened. I understand. She puts her coffee mug on the table. You don't look surprised. You were expecting this. I knew there was a chance you'd get them to tell you. It's what you do. You're the police. For what it's worth, I'm sorry for wasting your time. This is good. Clear the air first between you two. Then move on to questions. Compromise. All right, All right rhetoric. <laughs> no, it's not. Compromise. It's the opposite of that. This will let her dictate the terms of your... Shush, I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do to have these people after you? Industrial espionage. I joined a business collective with the intention of betraying them. I did my job well enough to be asked to do it again. With a bigger company. The kind you really, really don't fuck with. I took their ledgers, two decades worth of accounting. I need the names of the companies involved and who hired you. He taps on his notebook. This is some white collar shit? Yep, I was not expecting Are that. Are you fucking kidding me? I was not expecting that. Ugh! He wasn't even wrong for keeping the armor on during sex. <laughs> oh, God. It was not even the wrong call. Oh, my Bruh. God. Kim, why have we not arrested her yet? There may be grounds here. At least for an extended detention. Were you Miss Oranye 37? I am. They can never take my sash and my scepter from me. Hey. Yes, they can. 
for lying. Okay, drama, relax. So what if you were under arrest then? But I haven't done anything. Anything illegal. She backs up against the railing with a forced smile on her face. You misrepresent misrepresented information about the case. Without the Hardy's confession, we'd know nothing. The lieutenant produces a pair of handcuffs. Oh. Please, no. Arrest the liar now. That's all good, but I think we should still take you in just in case. Still? After all this, sir, please. It's a shitty world, and I know I'm shitty too. I know but I don't deserve to be sent to the moral intern and ground into paste just because I disturbed the sanctity of accounting. That's some multinational. She's gearing up for a last stand. This is it. I agree. The sanctity of accounting <laughs> is some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, you didn't get any reals in a while now with these choices. Unfortunately. <laughs> There's a very real corpse sitting out there, or not anymore, but there was a very real corpse mm -hmm. sitting out there. And that's very different from the sanctity of accounting. Fuck the white collar bullshit. My eyes couldn't roll any harder back in my head. What you other have the station calls, right? Where I have to show up at the station or I'll become a fugitive. You can write me one. You don't have to take me in right now. I promise I won't go out anymore at night. I'll be right here. I know you can do that. Just let me come in on my own. In two months, or maybe even one month. That's all I need. You do have the fun. <laughs> he looks at your ledger. That's it. I'm calling it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i am doing whatever volition says until proven otherwise maybe ravishal could be free i could be tried in a free ravishal an independent state that doesn't hand its detainees over to the moral intern a free ravishal there is a low distant rumble on the motor tract a great machine shaking the pillars down south. Electricity runs up your spine. You know, if Shivers is compromised, does does a hell of a good job hiding it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Wait. If you arrest her, Kim will have to transport her. You'd be without your partner for the rest of the day. Shut up. Shut up. He's making a decision, and it's his to make. Shut up. Oh, so dramatic, Wooly. Kim, arrest her before this drags out any longer. I will escort you to the motor carriage outside, miss. I did the right thing. I know I did. Did you? That's not true. But we did the best with what we had. Mm-hmm. Looking for something? Oh, and now that our partner's not here, you might have more to say. Oh, what was that argument all about? Uh, it's about biological determinism, natural law, the sorting of the races. He spits on the ground. Not the most popular topic nowadays, with a coalition in charge and all. You might want to change the topic. That is, bury your head under the sand like common sheep. Yeah, keep it inside, right? Yeah, just don't talk about it. Okay. Find your people, make sure that you're on the same wavelength, and then you go off. But otherwise, keep it on the wraps. Damn it, racist lorry driver. Why are you so fucking fat? <laughs> yes, I can really tell you're a prime example of superior design. It's true. Also, you need to realize the dangers of mixing races. Who knows what might happen? If people don't stay in their worst place, oh. you might end up with a new sub-race. Oh! Unknown characteristics leading to extra competition. God That's why you've got to control the offspring. God forbid. God forbid. Yeah, with the with the the mixing. The mixing. You know. The kind of kid I'm gonna have. Oh my god, you're diluting the good stuff. With the with the perfect coffee complexion. 
beautiful hair, ridiculously attractive mixed people. Mm -hmm. God forbid those who will literally inherit the earth. You're the Lorimon, right? What's your stance on drugs? Drugs? They're shit, man. I don't let anything pollute my body. He takes a long time for <laughs> <with> cigarettes. <laughs> There's Yorin. Take his side in this particular fight. No uh, doubt. Suggestion? What are we trying to get here? Why do you want to take his side on anything? Are, are, are we trying to get him to tell us the truth about uh, the the lorry hall? Gosh, just beat it out of him. I'm going to follow suggestion. Listen, I agree. It's our responsibility to keep this poison off the streets of Revachal, right? He eyes you wearily, unsure how to respond. This goes on for about two seconds. Mm -hmm. Then, damn, it didn't work. You should have signaled you're a nationalist before. <laughs> uh... I don't know shit. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. He puffs on his cigarette. He <laughs> he stands back a little wary as he looks at your stats and realizes that your fash stat is below all the others. <laughs> <laughs> Show me your card. Get out of here. I don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> he scans your numbers. He's a poet. Hit him with your best verse. We are not going to fail this. He will hear Still our here. best verse. Stuck in his damn jam, my man. Wait. There's something here. Stored away in some dusty corner. It starts like... A mirror's temperature is always zero. It is ice in the veins. Its camera is an x-ray. Whoa. What else? He leans in, his eyes bright with attention. It's a chalice held out to you in silent communion. Silent communion? That's good. He's transfixed by the words. We're grasping, Lee. You partake. You partake of a shifting identity. Identity never your own. Dang. That's some great shit. <laughs> you came up with that yourself. <laughs> I'm just a vessel for the muse. Right. But really, no bullshit. That's great stuff. I sort of want to know if it's yours. It's me. No matter. It's a fine stanza. You're not so bad after all. For a cop. For a cop. They're more often in the fists than rhymes, see. Let alone honesty in verse. Oh. Rhyme cop. No joke, man. Fuck the police. <laughs> um, if you say so. <laughs> he gives you a cautious thumbs uh, up. <laughs> yeah. You found some common ground with this man. He even impressed him. Yeah. The next time you look in the mirror, though, remember those words. Yo, fuck the police goes a long way, you know? Even from the police. <laughs> Damn, that's deep. Fuck, fuck Everard. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construction period and the zoning plan in the addendum. The pen is shaking in your hand as you draw a pathetic little <laughs> line. What have I done? <laughs> Keep drawing. <laughs> oh my god, it's gonna hurt! The line gets even shakier and starts to curve towards the bottom of the page. Have I ruined the document? No, it's just a line. Forgery obviously isn't your strong suit. Sorry for suggesting it. If you get someone to actually sign this, it should be fine. Do we have to fuck over the village now? <laughs> You you doomed them. They're doomed. They're doomed. That's ridiculous. <laughs> There's no way you roll the dice on a 58% chance to see whether or not the village is saved. I refuse. That's madness. Here comes the truck. That's absolute oh, insanity. Oh. If you and your ability to 58% fail Just rolling plowing the, through the village. Drawing a fucking farting dick and balls on this on the on the envelope. Everything is flat. And that's the end of the village. <laughs> Nibelheim go comes down to your ability to forge a document. We're one line away from saving everyone. Lammy is dead. 
Lammy is fucking <laughs> dead. The horseback Hot monument. Shit. That's the center of the district. They'd have to pay attention to that. We could get your name up there in light. Damn things do for a reconceptualization. Just, just stick your name on it. That's all. And we're just we're just slightly modifying the game state. <laughs> this whole thing is fucking nothing. So he's just gonna do it for all right. Not until we see the profits. He'll he'll just make it happen. He'll do it for the promises on the back end once again. Nothing exchanged. <laughs> just out of the air. Nothing lost, nothing gained, nothing ventured. This guy is amazing. You're hired. <laughs> That's it. I'm back. <laughs> this guy organized Fire Festival. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Idiot Doom Spiral, like, I'm not fucking leaving. <laughs> I'm not fucking leaving. <laughs> Jai ruled in the tent with the boys. This is a good moment to bring up his drinking. So let me see what happens if I go this direction. What's it about? Uh, I'll let my hand address the situation. Maybe you've heard. I used to be a very successful businessman. I've signed more than a few lease forms or whatever the fuck they were. Anyone's got a pen? The pro's gonna do it. I have this blue oblong pen. Don't break it. All right. He grabs the pen and paper and carefully scribbles on the dotted line next to Lilian's signature. Idiot Doom Spiral. Maybe someone else can help. Sure, I can fucking help. You need a signature. <laughs> I got you a signature. Hell yeah. Before you can reply, he's already furiously scribbling something on the paper. When he hands the document back to you, the signature in uppercase letters reads, Don't call Abigail. <laughs> Not exactly an expert forgery. Don't call Abigail would have signed something more like, Don't call Abigail. <laughs> and I somehow failed to do this with a pen? Can I have my pen back, please? Fucking cops, man. Always hassling the poor folk. You know what? I'm peaceful. <gasps> oh, no. No. No, 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 no. Oh, my God. <sighs> uh, let me understand this. So, losing the village? Yeah, we can keep going. Losing the pen, though. <laughs> nope. Cancel everything. Real the same photo. Yo! Oh my god! That looks bad. That looks terrible no matter how you flip it, Wooly. Losing Kim's pen sucks because I really don't want to piss Kim off. I want to be good to Kim in every right. way possible. Mm -hmm. And that's just gonna make him sad. Very much so. And while the so sad. And while the game will probably have something major occur to fix the burning of the fucking village. Right. The minor disappointment of Kim might just be him going, Ugh. yeah, I and thought. I don't want don't that want because that. that is the kind of thing the game might overlook. You don't want your parents to go, I'm not mad, I'm disappointed. What if you show a document and you don't give the pen? What's it about? That's what that we can find out. Yeah, yeah. maybe you fuck heard. around and find no, out. No, unfortunately. I got a freebie. When Boom. I purchased a whole carton of cigarettes. Done. Smoke cigarettes, get a free pen. Deals don't come any sweeter. Look at that. Lesson learned? Don't give the pen to anyone. I believe when we last I left off, our suggestion was those still really, really low. Look at those little bastards. Do you think she really needs more of that after a man died at sea? Well, that was honest. But what did I do then? What if I told you it is actually possible to go on a date sober? I'm listening. Lydian, walk with me. Just a walk? I don't know, officer. I would not have taken you for an innocent perambulator. I like that. I am. That's why you should definitely agree. Where would this walk take us, officer? She's thinking, eyes mapping your rugged features. All right. I will walk with you. But you need to understand that nothing is going to happen. We're just walking. Yeah. Just a good old-fashioned walk. I like it. It's happening. You're going on a date, Wooly. Interactables. 
I think. No, we got to pass time. Oh, 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 wait, talk to yourself, talk to yourself. Is there something here that would indicate a sniper used this place as a nest for taking oh, a shot? Oh, damn. <laughs> Just some urban detritus, a bottle, and a dilapidated old comms. Now, this is a fucking cop story, because yeah. here we are on the cusp of date, possibly the only chance we have at normalcy, but the brain can't turn off the copping. Hi, so here you are. It's late and the sun is going down. It'll be dark soon. If we stay here long enough, we will be joined by a cortege of drunks and teenagers. Know that you're not the first guy to bring a girl to Land's End. This is what the locals call a, a make-out spot. <laughs> that is not going to happen here today. I just want to make that clear, Dimples. Dimples! That's cute! She turns to face the sea once more. You should say something. Anything. Maybe the tequila sunset thing. You know, a past incarnation of myself called himself tequila sunset. I wonder why that is. It's a common Ravisholian expression. Means drinking yourself to death. Oh. Oh, indeed. Damn. Can't dodge it. <laughs> nice try, Wooly. I appreciate the effort. Listen, if you found a corpse the other day... You gotta talk to someone. You, huh? You're probably not gonna be able to stop talking about uh -huh. it. And what about you? Keeping the name? I think I'm good with Harrier Dubois these days. Well then, Officer Dubois. She nods to you, then turns toward the sunny sea. Isn't it strange for this all-powerful thing, the sun, to be so generous towards us? You know, the best time to go out fishing is usually towards sunset, when the water is warmer. Say something about the sun. Here we go. Thank you. Two different approaches to cap this off with style. Fist pump. Stare into the sun. Yeah, a massive thermonuclear reaction. Five billion years old. The sun is a god. Aye. Somehow. And a benevolent one. When did you last have one of those on your side? In, in my early 20s, maybe. Well, now you have that giant thing to watch over you. So, to hell with youth. You know, the wind's going to pick up soon, and I have to go, but... She takes her sword out of the scabbard. Swing! The blade shines in the gathering dark. Heal your wounds, Harry. Grow strong. Then we'll settle the matter. <laughs> Sounds good, but it doesn't stick things. I've no use for it anymore. What? Are you yo, going on a date and you get a sword? Right? Dude, but, sorry again, but best date ever. I mean, you know, like, sucks that there's not much more to say about it. But also, wow. Okay. Equip this to impress yourself. What what updates in this conversation? Already? I just You're already ringing the phone? I just I'm I just need to know. Went home. Thank you for a nice evening. Next morning at 8 a.m. <laughs> texting. Next morning. Hey, wake up. Five wakey, minutes late. Baking. She gave me a sword. <laughs> Couldn't help it. You had to go back in. This place is kind of growing on me, you know? Aye. <laughs> but don't let it grow too much. This is not the place to settle down. Now. What's on your mind, Officer Harry? Here we go. Nice and easy. No way out, little guys. Whoa. Not out of this gym. That is the reptilian brain. <laughs> Pulling it back just a little bit. But we still hear you, motherfucker. Crocodile Dundee over there. <laughs> we still hear you. Nice and easy. Is that the police? Why are the police here? The crypto fascists. <laughs> That's very different. That's <laughs> very, very different. A cryptozoologist, someone who studies cryptids secret animals, yeah. and secret weird animals. 
a crypto fascist. Mm. Are you familiar with the term? Mm. That's a real word. That's a real thing. Of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn water lock is broken. And we can't go all the way around the 881. Yeah, yeah, that was me. I broke the water lock with my mortar carriage. But it's fixed now, you can go back. You broke the water lock with a motor carriage? There was a billboard in the canal. Not a vehicle. It said Samaran Butter. No, 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 see, I jumped over the canal in my motor carriage, tearing through the Samaran Butter sign, which fell into the canal, blocking the gates. I used the pawn shop as a launch <laughs> ramp. Why? He spreads his arms in disbelief. It was an experiment to gauge the Capri 40's aerial performance. I'm something of a gentleman scientist. I'm sorry. Scientist. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> but you said the water lock is fixed now, so we can go back. Hello, I'm Gary. Very generous of you to help us out, Enough officer. Enough of cryptozoology. Let's talk about something real. Yeah, yeah. Let's get into it, shall we? Yellow man. I mean, officer. Bruh. Okay! <coughs> Alright. No, like... Alright. At this point, Kim, you can throw hands. The unexpected straight punch. Could this be our lucky magic third? Oh my god. Is this the third? Oh my god. The lucky threes? <laughs> I've been tempted on occasion, but someone has to stay strong for Revacall. For Revacall! I said it. Do you remember how, when we met Measure Hat and I said the next racist will be a really good one? Yep. Well, this is that racist. <laughs> yes! Our lucky racist. <laughs> Presenting a work of art. Oh, he is a piece of work indeed. Will you grant us three wishes, Gary? Are you Gary? Are you a <laughs> Are you? Are you? Are you Gary? Huh? Daenerys face. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. Due to a quite steep price tag, it is very unusual to see one in police livery. That machine really puts the loco back in locomotion. Very cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. You want to take a closer look? The lieutenant smiles ever so slightly. Oh, we get to do car talk. <laughs> Let's go. It took a while to get here. Room, room. We get to do car talk. We're supposed to do that on day one. <laughs> Mama's serving some serious <laughs> macaroni. <laughs> oh. You lost me there. He's looking at you, perplexed. 130 kilowatts is a lot of power, Kim. The kinema is fast. Feels right at home on the raised motor track. Hard to find something that could overtake it. That's what? Uh, 7 liter V12? <laughs> 7.2. Supercharged. Yeah. The lieutenant is trying to suppress a smug smile unsuccessfully. Must be an advancement on the KR18GU uh, engine in the older 40 models, right? Yeah. You know it? The lieutenant seems surprised. Just the basics. Cast iron black, swirling chamber injection, dual chains, drive it overhead, camshafts, two valves per cylinder, hydraulic valve, lash adjustment. Just the basics. Uh, yes, that's right. I'm very impressed that you know these things. He stares at you in surprise. Yeah. Fine machine. It. Yeah, we gotta hand. make the mistake, but we've, we've warmed up. <laughs> yes, an extraordinary machine. There's gentleness in the lieutenant's voice as his eyes run over the vehicle's contours. Helium headlights would improve the range and quality of the visual field a lot. Ever thought about switching to helium headlights? Actually, I have a pair at home. Just haven't gotten around to fitting them yet. Mm. I need to lay some wiring for the ballast first. If we ever get this case solved, maybe we can do it together. Oh! You want to help? Thank you for the offer. That might be fun. Let's do the case first though, alright? Glances at you and smiles. He liked the idea. Yeah! Alright! Yeah, Kim! Let's move. Yeah! Yeah, buddy, buddy! Yeah! Buddy cop. Buddy cop adventure. It's been a, been a minute since we got to appreciate that. Hello, Pleasance. I get Annette's a trooper. She looks like she can take it. But it's actually wearing her down. You know she's been biting her nails. God, I've told her not to do that. It's disgusting. 
and I told you to mind your own business. Clearly, you have no idea how hard it is to raise a girl in this economy. Her this firm. economy is a mysterious force, like cosmic weather. Have you seen mysterious my net worth? and harsh. <laughs> have you felt it? Come on, ma'am. It's obvious she can't do anything about it. You are placing an unnecessary burden on a young child. What you're doing is wrong. Even I know that. And I usually don't know anything. She stands stiff and severe, silently fuming. Ten or so seconds pass. I'm a moron. Change. Ten seconds. This is a person coming to terms with a new reality. One where they are wrong. It's not easy. Oh, it doesn't oh. it doesn't happen often, huh? <laughs> huh, bitch? Huh? Oh. How do you like that? How you like that? Oh, volition. Volition. Because it hurts, right? Volition, you're so good. You go around you're telling so people how it is. Fucking good, this Volition. This is how things are. And you're like, no. Ugh. And if they were, they're trying to make it work. They're this trying so hard. Right here. To hang on to the truth. But no, it's not the truth. You're wrong. This, right, this one in a billion moment. This thing that just never fucking Happens. <laughs> with with the people that it, it never happen happens with. yeah is that what the an old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island it is surrounded by scaffolding that has been haphazardly erected that around is it. crazy scaffolding a matrix of metal tubes and wooden planks jut out at odd angles a miserable tarpaulin covers up the horse and rider, flapping in the cold coastal air. There are no lights that spell out your name. No workers with calloused hands leering from above. Just construction materials displayed as if to mourn your misplaced <laughs> dreams. There's not an ounce of artistry here. It's even worse than expected. Permanently under construction? <laughs> Montreal style. Oh no. Mm. He didn't do shit. He didn't do shit. <laughs> Why don't we fire one of these bad boys up? You can't fire them up. They're broken. Only that one machine in the main hall works. The royalist pinball. He looks away. <sighs> Kim Kitsuragi, Kim Kitsuragi. 97%. Kim Pinball Kitsuragi. AKA. Kimball? Exactly. That's what he's known as. His reputation precedes him. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> he's a fallen god? He's a pinball wizard? What? You're Kim Pinball Kitsuragi. So now he remembers. I was a juvenile police officer for over 15 years. It's how I started out in the RCM. Once I had to infiltrate a pinball ring. As you do when you're a juvie cop. I needed to become a pinball champion. I trained <gasps> for, for the case. Months. The job was successful and I was moved out of the <gasps> juvenile wing to homicide. Oh my god. So he, oh my god, he had to grind. Yo! He didn't want to play the game. Yo! <laughs> he didn't want to play the game. Okay, Reggie. <laughs> there is a child trafficking ring being run by one of the biggest sponsors and you have to place high at evo to get that sponsorship <laughs> and get in the oh and God. then you get inside <laughs> and you're like okay get good immediately this is the night watchman's booth the name on the door reads rene arno rene left his uniform neatly folded on the table generally speaking it would be dishonorable to take it. But then, it looks like a military uniform, and wearing that is very honorable. So, a conflict of honor, it's up to you. A conflict of honor. Ends up being a zero overall. Dishonorable steel, honorable wear. Yeah. Zero. Hey, I mean, you need something to, to mash that metal, right? Stolen valor is still valor. It's valor. Puts you back at zero. I suppose Rene is not going to be needing it anymore. It's a bit too colorful for my taste, though. <laughs> Alright, let's get the thought. Wow, this jacket makes you feel strong. <laughs> as if your blood 
is mixing with that of the venerable Philippian loyalists of old. Mixing? Does my blood need mixing or is it as good as it is? Apologies. You're right. The need for a strong central government has always been clear to you. You're a true patriot of Revachor. Damn. Born to do it. Fuck coffee. Unless it's straight dark. <laughs> but uh-oh. You had to mix the beans with the water. Oh no. Uh-oh. Oh, Mixing. No. <laughs> chew those beans. Get out. Just chew the beans raw. Can't drink it. <laughs> Too much mixing. Mr. Dubois, why on earth you dress like my recently deceased security guard? <gasps> um... Oh shit. I did not, <laughs> I did not expect that. Um... <laughs> I did not expect that. This is... Oh! Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up. <laughs> just, just give a homie a moment to think. Oh shit. <laughs> Just hold up! Whoa, Ooh, what's the rush? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Why did you notice that? You're not supposed to care about how I'm dressed. Cotton 4K. <laughs> Yo, Everett's got the giant fucking. He's got the IMAX camera. Shit! <laughs> We're honoring a great man. From where I'm sitting, it looks more like you've robbed a dead man, Mr. Dubois. But as this matter is far below my pay grade, I'm just going to ask, <sighs> how can I help you today? We lost, we lost some advantage. We lost some hand. Not much, but it'll do. Go. It'll have to. He puts his, his hand out. Will you shake it or will you walk away? How do you feel? After talking shit. After talking all this mad shit. After going online and talking mad shit. Face to face. And then you 10 would him. And he went GG. GG, shake my hand. Yep. Let's right? Do it. Yeah, I think I think it's deserving of a handshake. Because it's either it's either shake the hand or viscant. Yo, <laughs> damn, you need some mouthwash? <laughs> Yo, the next time you forget the taste of my dick in your mouth. <laughs> oh. Legendary. <laughs> That's a legendary check. <laughs> Shake this it. grip is firm and reassuring, like holding a piece of unpolished granite. GG. Hey, what the fuck do you do to my statue, bro? Yo, seriously. Yo, that is true. Scaffolding for nothing? Tequila sunset. What's going on? No one does it better than me, eh? I was able to get it all together, and so fast, too. No wonder I used to be an industry leader. Let me guess. It's like when you put up an under-construction sign with the fancy... Like logo and posters of your face smiling, that is doing better for your branding than actually completing the project. Yeah, it's a bunch of scaffolding. Of course not. Your trademark will be all over it as soon as the workers can get to it. The strikes holding them up. How much <laughs> I can do about that? Uh, so solve the strike, and then the construction can begin. What a clown! Of course. Right to. Work. Right to work. Shame on you. Okay. Are you a mercenary hired by Wild Pints? Hell no. I'm just an honest scab. I won't have talk like that around here. You understand? You also are Titus Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> Doing your best to throw it a little bit different from your normal talking voice. I think you might be able to help me with decipher some of these tattoos. Fucking loincloths. Really did him in. Can you tell me what the tattoo means? What it means? He points to one tiny star in the web of lines, away from the man's heart, almost on his stomach. I can tell you what this one means. Only one. You want to hear what happened here? Yes. Our colonel is deep in the bush here. Deep. In the fucking bush, in Benital, 41. Monsoon season. 
He's on a reconnaissance mission. Our boy. He's only a captain then, but he knows how these men think. If they don't see action soon... At dawn, he comes upon two kids, breeding in the bushes by the river. Or maybe they weren't breeding. Maybe they were just making eyes at each other. I like to think they were breeding. We shot the boy. He was useless, but the girl, she was nice. A little fat, you know, but not too old. She was quite the entertainment for the week she lasted, expired in the hands of Sarge Mason, the kind of guy who'd make Chief there shit his pants and cry like a bitch. God. <laughs> Mason couldn't let go. Cut the tits off her cold body and fucking ate them. <laughs> That primitive spirits were watching over him now. Drowned in a creek a week later. Spirits, my ass. There's a word on the tip of your tongue. Colorless. Odorless. It's... Evil. You bet it was. What is evil? It's just... Nature. This guy. You used to say evil is when nature and spirit meet in the wrong place. You were there? No. I was in the Domain. In Jamrock. Being a bouncer. You're not really a scab leader, are you? Fucking mask is getting sweaty. I want to take my mask off. But... He's under orders. And orders are orders. I'm taking it back. Go ahead. All right now. Free commerce! Keep the goods flowing! Okay. Well. Thanks for laying it out. That's the best he could come up with for a story. It's real simple. When the time comes, there's no conversation to have. Yep. You just click the button. Yeah. There's no conversation. It's it's very, very simplifying. Oh my god. I need you to stop taking locusts from the traps. The cryptozoologists are trying to find something very important. The locusts are bait. I don't give a shit. I don't need the locusts anyway. Shit is all lame now. He, turns, he was right. Turns towards the fence. Okay now. That's settled. I'd better be off. The fuck are they trying to catch anyway? With the traps? The insulinian phasmid. Huh. <laughs> he recognizes the name. <laughs> um, no. I don't, I'm not gonna enter. Later, Kuna. Oh my god, I can't believe we're gonna entertain this fun. Like a sponge, he absorbs it all. Be it measure head or crypto fucking zoology, you know what an insulindian phasmid is. Bitches think Kuno doesn't know shit. The fuck out of here. Kuno's tired of this shit. Kuno fucking knows. He just doesn't care. You're lame. Alright? Oh, In case you didn't wow. know. Wow. Gart, I need to sing karaoke now. No, you don't. It's not happening. Gart? He tries not to look at you. It's dangerous to acknowledge the karaoke man. Ha! Well, we don't have any tapes. They all got stoked. That's fine. That's I have my own song with me. Yeah. The man in the vest and the violet shirt stares at the tape you've just given him. He begins to frown. Hard. This is the look of a man who's defeated. He knows he's out of excuses. Oh, it's happening. Fine, fine. Climb on that stage and do your thing. Just get out of my hair. I'll plug it in for you. Damn this karaoke machine. All right. Zan koku wa tenshi no yoni. Kim is just like, oh. <laughs> Doing the moves there. Left to right. The stage is all set up for your performance. Feels silent. 
You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. Dress code insane silk dragon. <laughs> we blew that number the fuck up. The air is thick with anticipation. I would often go there to the tiny church there. The smallest church in San San. Though it once was larger. How the real may rest there. Down through the mist there Toward the Seven Sisters Toward those pale cliffs there I would often stay there In their tiny yard So glad here. Looking forward to the past here. But now you are all alone. None of this matters now. None of this matters at all. Damn. That was like half Shatner spoken word. <laughs> half Shatner, half cash. Yeah, half cash, half Shatner. Absolutely. The cash was there. The cash flavor was absolutely there. A lazy applause fills the room. You feel your hands shake as a glimpse of your body returns to you. I'd like to dedicate this song to my partner, Kim Kitsuragi, not to the lieutenant. Kim, you're a real one. The lieutenant doesn't say anything, but gives you a quick smile before turning away. Hey. <laughs> He's incapable of blushing, but if he weren't, he'd blush. We start out Let pretty high, turn on the and then you start the doing this. How come there's no negative? Does someone feel like because now it gets worse. Now it gets worse. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, you're supposed to stand up and just start singing, but the fact that you take a minute to you go choke, <laughs> big old wet gulp noise, and then feedback. The air is thick with anticipation. There's a lump in my throat. Is it gonna be the limbic system? I would often <laughs> go there <laughs> into the limbic system. <laughs> the time yeah. Yeah. There. <laughs> The smallest touch perfect. in sun, sun. Perfect, perfect, perfect. That works super well. Now it once was larger. <sighs> oh, of course it is. How the real may rest there. But he's trying. <laughs> Down through the mist there. It's, he's really trying. To watch the... Seven sisters towards those pale cliffs that <laughs> I would often stay there <laughs> in the tiny yard there. Damn. I have been so glad here. 
Just get all the Jack White energy Looking you can. Looking forward to the past. Or the yeah. darkness. But now. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, it's you are all alone. Oh, this is feelings. Oh my God, he's bowing down. None of this matters. <laughs> <laughs> Pour one out for Bismarcky. <laughs> oh, you got what I need. Yes, man. The whirling is now empty. <laughs> Most tense. I've gone out for a cigarette. None of them are smokers. Do you hear that? To blow your mind. It's the most pathetic applause in the world, Harry. Made of pity. No <laughs> one liked you. Fuck you! I gave it my fucking best. I gave it everything. <laughs> and you shit on me! Someone walks out of the room. <laughs> Some woman. Is it because of you? I sang about how I feel! <laughs> Fuck you all, scum! That's it. I'm unplugging it. <laughs> you press this stop on the tape carousel. You hear a little whine of feedback, and then the mic dies in your hand. Let's go, officer. These people wouldn't know a good performance if it beat them in the ass. Wow. You liked it, Kim? Wow. I found the ice cream maker, but I couldn't get it open. It's completely frozen. I've done 90% of this quest, yeah. lady. This is getting ridiculous. Can't you just be frosted? Or, I don't know. I don't know about the ice cream maker. Just figure something hey, out. can you figure it out? This solution. But she doesn't want to hand it over to you yet. It's a thing. Something she holds dear. Yeah, why can't you go and just get it yourself? Because she's not allowed in the space. The bookstore lady hates me. Says I'm part of the curse. Whatever that means. All right, I'll go look for the offsite copy again. Thanks. There! She thinks for a moment, then reaches behind the radio computer and hands you what looks like an oversized pry bar. Okay, so you can't actually end this or solve this yeah. quest until you talk to her. And here's my false and multi-tool. You might need it to hack loose some ice. Yes. Kay. It opens everything. Perfect. If you get me the offside copy, then you can keep the false one. It yeah. hurts a bit for her to say this. She's not too happy to be parting with the Kaval Sund. Cool. What is that? It looks like a cool tech blade. Like, it looks like Soul Bad Guy should be swinging it around. <laughs> <laughs> Mark three or yeah, something. Yeah, Junkyard Dog. Some outrage components. Look at that! Oh my god. Yeah! It's actually the Junkyard Dog. <laughs> That's crazy. I didn't real like, it literally is, wow. Okay. You're gonna far slash the shit out of the <laughs> ice box. Kind of frame! <laughs> <laughs> Let's see it. Oh! Oh wow, they're already installed. Lights. Yo, that would I'm be a, a sick party. Actually. I'm a I'm a sucker for fancy lights. Yeah, <laughs> they're the cheapest thing you can fucking get. Now the only thing left to do is the name of the club. Will you do the honors, detective? Andre's overthinking it. Says the girl with the microphone. Yes, you should do it, detective. It would be good for the signs. Right. Noid's right. You've helped us so much, it's the right thing to do. I think I've come up with a name. You have? Well, what's the name? Oh, Disco Elysium. <laughs> like that DeLorean word for the world, you know. Uh, do you like it? Roll the fucking credits. <laughs> Mission accomplished. But Disco Elysium, isn't it wacky? Disco's kind of gone, isn't it? Forgotten. Is it? The past is the future, but the future is dead. Disco dies only to live again. Mm -hmm. No, it's beautiful. Beautiful and brave. Like we want it to be. And short. And memorable. Now keep in mind, Zatum did not go with No Truce with the Furies. They too 
second guess that name. Yep. It's settled then. Too hardcore. Everyone welcome to Disco Elysium. Let's not tell anyone about this. What Put the? Put your hands where I can see them. The aging woman <laughs> under a mountain of police paraphernalia mumbles to herself and notices you and reaches for the megaphone. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that got me. That got me going. Have we encountered the true hobo cop? The ultimate final? We were never deserving of the title. <laughs> never. Look at this shit. The real hobo cop has arrived. Madame, please drop the firearm immediately. Fuck. Are you on drugs? I don't think she's on drugs. Being off drugs might actually be the problem here. You're not the police. We are the police. Back up! Back up! Back up! Status unconfirmed! Lieutenant Double Rear Freighter, Harrier Dubois, 41st Precinct. This is my partner, Lieutenant Kitsuragi from the 57th. Let's go. No. Oh, no. Oh, uh, I thought Mr. Moran... Gareth! There's a scenario unfolding in her head right now. It has nothing to do with what's happening here. No, it doesn't. Flip the fucking coin. Here's the gun. Drop the monkey. <sighs> dark right. The noise will startle her, allowing you to close the distance. Left hand grabs the barrel. Right one breaks the wrist. Okay. Like Guts and Griffith. X cut. No, that won't be necessary. Look closer. The gun, all three barrels, red and blue light shining through. It's not loaded. For the love of Christ. Kim, I'm almost certain there's no bullets in that gun. Huh? My God, I think you're right. Pull the trigger, lady. I dare you. Oh my God. <laughs> She straight up did it, and we took the we took the damage. Well, we failed the nine. In your peripheral vision, the lieutenant releases the half squeezed trigger. God, I almost blew her head off. What? What is this? This isn't police issue. Police weapons, bullets. This isn't real. Please God, bullets have bullets. What is this? Why did you sell me this? So you know that you bought it. Grab the gun. Right now. This might be your only chance. Pick it up. No one ever cares anymore. Why would they cheat me like this? So what produces this end result then, hmm? Great gears are grinding to a halt. The machine is powering down. She's all out of joint. What fucking horror story creates this situation? Uh, someone just said Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Why is she like this in the first place? Honestly, I don't know. Dementia, probably. Dementia and Channel 8 <laughs> and loneliness. Dementia and Fox News. <laughs> okay. Channel 8! <laughs> Channel 8! <laughs> What's that, copper? You want us to help little old ladies now? You're local law enforcement, aren't you? Helping troubled civilians should fall under your jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah. We'll send someone out. Who is? Wait. It's the pigs, isn't it? Yep, her. God. Poor lady. Don't worry. We'll handle this. I think she got some family in Kurong or something. Bastards left her alone when she got sick. We've been getting complaints. Hey, wasn't Everard's B team looking for her the other day? They said something about her. Well, I don't know. Finding something? Shit. Call your grandma, kids. Otherwise, she winds up on the boardwalk with a gun. <laughs> 
And police sirens on her back. Yeah. Let's go, Granny. I think you're right, Gene. Do you have something of yours, Pig? Tyrus gives him a beer salute and turns to you. Whatever you do, do not admit to these punks you lost your gun. Didn't I kind of already do so? Do. We're all good. No. Well. She had my hat. Then. Copper. No. They totally said what it was. What was it? Oh! 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 <laughs> oh no! Oh, the game remembers! The game remembers! Oh shit! I don't remember. I was fucking drunk. <laughs> Let me know if you figure it out back there. Now, oh man! With. Okay. Yeah. Yo, this game is so good. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you did. You let it slip, moron. Oh, uh, hi, man. Um, it's good to see composure you. Composure is very possible. Okay. You close your <laughs> eyes and vacate your there. skull, leaving your brain to wonder, where did that little fluttering light go? Kim, I apologize in advance. You can turn it off if you want. Darkness. You sink down the darkest fathoms of your own personal deep. Vertebrate by vertebrate. Through the unformed skulls of your mind. I'm ready. Good. Damn. Because from what I can see, it's about to bust a moon. Seems like the spinal cord has a backbone of its own. I'm here to bust a groove. As you open your eyes, you should scream. Hyper, hyper. It <laughs> seems appropriate. Hyper! Hyper! You have become a flawless interlocking man. <laughs> of the throb coming from the spine. The one called Egghead. Entirely, rigidly, uh. Without pity or fear. Yeah! Moves. Disco, baby! Let's go, Harry! The era! Cutting it up! With the fucking sword and blade in hand? Seamless! <laughs> Yo. The animator who did this? Excellent job. <laughs> Harry is out here with us on the couch. He is out of his body right now. Kim, get in here! Yes! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> this is clearly a code 31 emergency. Code 31! Code 31! Code 31 emergency? Really? <laughs> Officer in need of assistance! On the dance floor! Back up! We need backup! The lieutenant crosses his arms with a bemused look. Yo, I did say there was an emergency on the dance floor, did I not? The emergency. Not enough, Kim. Ah, oh, come on, hurry. Yo, he, oh, oh, oh. Did that just cheer him up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like the entire cracked a little small Detective Kitsuragi. <laughs> Get in here! Who's yeah! You are. <laughs> Lieutenant, I'm only gonna pull rank on you one time, and that time is now. Are you kidding me? I assure you I am not! Get your groove on, Lieutenant! Oh yeah? I did 15 years in the juvenile crime unit. I can do age inappropriate. <laughs> now, check this shit out. The Lieutenant begins to heel kick. Oh! 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 Intensity. Oh! 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 Yo, Kimbo, <laughs> he's learned some moves. <laughs> oh shit, the, uh, uh, delicacy. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, just with the soft, the soft step, gliding like yo, to, the soft sea walk. You know when they do it without like without the hard step. Light on your feet, just feathers, feathers. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Hold up. Hold oh. on! <laughs> the playthrough <laughs> buddy! The main character, Shivers, coming through! Shivers in the clutch! Yo! Let's fucking go! 
on the coast of the Martinez <laughs> in a small weather-beaten stave church built 380 years ago by settlers from the Occident, most likely to guard against an anomaly at its center. An officer of the RCM is contorting his body into idiotically rigid shapes as he invents the future of dance music. It's the hardest anyone has ever done. <laughs> I love this. What is this strange feeling I keep having? This cold, even now. I am La Rebachelière. Hello. I am the city. Of course you are. What do you mean, you are the city? I am a fragment of the world spirit, the genius Loki of Rebachel. My heart is the wind corridor. The bottom of my air is red. I have a hundred thousand luminous arms. Come morning, I carry industrial dust and let it settle on tree leaves. I shake the dust from those leaves and onto your coat. I need you. You can keep me on this earth. Be vigilant. I love you. An officer of the RCM is lying on the floor of a small church with his eyes rolled back and his tongue lolling out. Several others are standing around him. He slowly comes to. Had a good rest there? <laughs> this, is, this is the greatest side quest of all time in any video game ever made <laughs> but she says she's insane like me she's not insane what did she tell you this expression betra betrays extreme skepticism she's over radiated from the pale transit no she's not she's a sentimental alcoholic they all are never take a drop and you'll be eight laps ahead of those upper class winos just like old mr claire here try it you'll be a real super detective Actually, yep, yep, I've walked the path of sobriety for quite a while now. Mm -hmm. I can see that, Harry. Alcohol has left its marks, yes. but you're doing better than when I first saw you. Rich man is shitting himself. The working class sober. That's, then he's, he's acknowledged it. We're doing better. I feel like we got a pat on the head, finally. From Evra, I'm right. Everyone in the game. So what's gonna happen now? What was always going to happen? We take the harbor and she fucks off to Ozon, uncorks a bottle of wine, calls her partners, and says they need to distance themselves from this nasty business before the big shit spinner splashes everyone. Only difference is the union doesn't have to lose 2,000 men to machine gun fire. <laughs> but I swore fealty to her. She was my beautiful lady. <laughs> Drama, can you sit the fuck Holy down? Holy shit! Fealty is one thing. Lady! <laughs> Yo. That's wow. That is a new word. That is a fucking $10,000 word. Finally, my time to shine. There's a ladder next to the sign. Perhaps we can climb it? Enter through the roof? Perhaps you can climb them. We are not climbing anything. I'm 43 years old, and I plan to live to see 70. It's just a ladder, Kim. Fair okay, enough. yeah, it's missing a, a few bars on it. Uh, uh, it's kind of crooked. <laughs> but, you know. What if you were to reconceptualize climbing the ladder? Visual calculus? Astral projection. <laughs> Be open-minded about this. <laughs> I can't say that, Harry. What if I don't climb? What if I just teleport? Teleportation is not a thing. The lieutenant stares at you, stone-faced. Sandbag! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, some warfare check. Why Kirk is, is it... trying so hard. No, fuck you. <laughs> it's a challenging 12? That's it? It's to the roof. All you need to do is close your eyes and concentrate. Darkness enfolds you. You can feel the distance between the bench and the first rung of the ladder. 
All you need to is just do it. Do it. Zoot, zap, pow, crinkle. It's like magic. You feel yourself disappear. Your atoms fading out of existence. Two separated shoulders <laughs> incoming. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Bam! You find yourself on the roof, having mastered the art of physical displacement. Trent, what happened? <laughs> Trent! <laughs> Trent saw some shit. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe it. Disco Elysium. <laughs> The director's cut. Please tell me I'm hallucinating and this is not a convenient device to not have to animate us climbing the ladder. Please tell me this is a this is a bit and this is not a way of shortcutting the animation for climbing a ladder. Kim, I did it, I teleported. I just saw you climb the ladder. You just climbed it like a regular person. <laughs> no nonsense. You fuckers. <laughs> oh man. You did teleport up there and then they fucking pushed out. Suddenly, your entire body is paralyzed. Aggressive white noise fills your skull. A strange pain like you've never felt before. Through the setting, you hear a woman's voice. I know you're feeling pretty uncomfortable right now. Don't move too much or fight it. That'll just make it worse. Says the shadowy figure by the machine. Can't say it's a pleasure, officer. I was really hoping not to make your acquaintance. But here we are. Man, that's weird. That was Japanese. <laughs> Radio uh, from everywhere. Dude, we're getting blasted. You know, maybe, uh, maybe letting in the memories of others in the from the pale is not as fun of an experience as I thought. Mm. <laughs> maybe it's kind of brutal. Did you shoot Lely? Did you shoot Lely? No, I didn't do it. I only helped stage the lynching, though I doubt that makes much of a difference to you. Huh. Class, you found it. Weird. You came up with a plan so quickly. What? No. Faking a lynching was her idea. Her idea? Yeah. In cold blood. It really surprised me how quickly she was able to get a hold of herself once we got up there. It was like she was another person. The party girl was gone. She asked me to help her drag him into the shower so she could wind the shower head around his neck to fake lividity. Then she dressed him while I went to get the hardy boy. Classia knew exactly what she was doing. You can't remain calm under pressure otherwise. She lied to me about that too. That's bad that she'd be so calm. I don't yeah. believe you. I wasn't sure whether to admire her or be disturbed. 72% red check. Destroy the machine. Nudged it during the chug talk. Momentary window of clarity. <laughs> the violet white noise becomes even more overwhelming closer to the compressor. Feels like your brain is swelling up in your skull. Hold still and try to have an apocalyptic vision. Yo, these oh, nose effects look like okay? clearly over the daily limit at this point. Don't worry, Kim, I'm just trying to have an apocalyptic vision. The pain intensifies as your hands attempt to reach out into the pale chaos. What are you doing? I told you it's best not to move. I can't take any more. Just go. Glad to have been of assistance. 
Best of luck to you, officers. Revishal's a bitch. She tosses her head back defiantly and turns down the machine. The woman runs past you and disappears into the darkness of the tunnel. All things considered, it could have gone worse. Hey, so we've been monitoring you internally, and now we know your copo type. I was kind of hoping I'm the apocalypse cop. No, you're the sorry cop. The cop who's sorriest. Let's make it official then, shall we? We hit the threshold. Big four. We hit the four. Big four. What a sad time to get this. That is super sad. What a sad time to get what this. What a sorry time to get this. <laughs> uh, not here. Maybe if we're standing here? In the sun? Here? Oh my god, the city's on fire. It's burning. It's burning. You can hear it? It's burning. It. It's burning, dude. <laughs> they locked fast teleport? Stop. Just up ahead. Danger. <laughs> oh my Lang. god. I'm all out of shits to give, loincloth. Welcome to the fucking reckoning. Uh, it's going down. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The Kipt is merciful, willing to spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. Her tone is frighteningly emotionless. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street? This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. She sounds very sure of herself. It is in my best interest to bring this climax to a swift, anticlimactic conclusion. Okay, we're not really built for gunfights. <laughs> we're not really built for gunfights at all. But we got a point to spend and we got some armor if you stretch the standoff you might get six xp and get an extra point maybe we can talk this out boys <laughs> hey guys how about a chat uh, just just <laughs> i need a few more points <laughs> come on i bought a case of coronas <laughs> who's in limes hey lizzie you got some li guard got limes yeah guard get us some limes how about 20 limes for all of you clowns? <laughs> uh, okay. What do we do? My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. He puts his hand on his holster. He doesn't want to, but he must. We're out of time. This is the mercenary tribunal. Let's do it. This is the police. Oh, Drop oh, it, creep. Oh, oh, oh. Get lost, comedian. You cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. He licks his lips, waving his gun at the crowd. Losing his balance for a moment, he staggers backward. Oh. Yeah, he's drunk. Ooh. Big fuck. Is the only word you can make out. No. Wait, it's good you have that gun. It really is. Just soften him up first. Present an argument. Rhetoric. You're gutsy rhetoric. Even if it comes to a fight, it's always a good idea to drag it out first. Get under his skin. Suggestion. I don't know about this getting under his skin. What if he gets under yours? I'm barely keeping your head from trembling here. Composure. Oh, okay. You've brought backup. Point to the masked man. From out of town. Listen, they didn't do it. You're all drunk. Look at yourselves. The Wild's Pines rep does not approve of this. Rhetoric challenging. Think of an argument. 83% red check. Because you know about down well. 
Suggestion, formidable, 13, 83%. Talk about the hanged man, plus two, name. Ellis Cotonaire. Thank you. He was fostered and had blue eyes. Hand-eye coordination, legendary, 14. Shoot Cortonaire. Low, 28%. Distracted by memories, figure out the armor. Damn. Well, this is just the character we've built, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yep. Low S HEC. Stand there quietly, hoping nothing happens. <laughs> hoping nothing bad happens. Red check, 100%. <laughs> Something bad happened. Trivial. <laughs> okay. So, you've brought backup from out of town. Oh yeah, that's rude. Rude, the killer, Owen Cloven. He doesn't talk much. The gunner, the raddest, the killer. Good. I kill killers! Point to your chest! <laughs> yeah! What are we waiting for? Let's blow that pig fucking uh -oh. mouth off his face! A lot of people could have gone to the roof, like Gart, the cafeteria manager, <laughs> who's watching from up here! <laughs> Gart's out here enjoying the show. Everybody looks at each other like, Gart, yeah, it was Gart, Gart, it was Gart, Gart get him! <laughs> get him! <laughs> I heard him saying something about a cock carousel! <laughs> he holds up the bird. <laughs> Just oh, like petting it, like. <laughs> you heard wrong. She and these men have been helping us find the shooter. The hanging was only a cover-up. Listen. Fuck. He pulls the trigger. A plume of smoke erupts from the muzzle of his gun. I missed. 92%. We have failed, I think, two of those in the past. We have. <laughs> Three if you can't doke a pot. Oh my god. Alright, here we go. This is an illegal tribunal. Creno would never sanction this. Who's the commanding officer? Take your pick. You were called Downwell once. What happened? What always happens when you get good at your job? That name meant night raids. Fucking extrajudicial funky time. Burn villages. Shit. It sounds bad on the radio. The same thing happened when we were called whatever the fuck it was. Probably won't be called Cronell for much longer either. 83. Talk about the hag man. Dangerous. Ask about him first. You don't want personal facts about his dead friend coming out of your mouth. He has to start it. Who are you? Cordy? Sergeant Major Raoul Cortiner. <coughs> reporting in to burn this fucking mud hut to the ground. Click, click, click. The realization comes to you like a picture puzzle coming together. There his you go. name is Raoul Cortenar. The dead man's name is Elise Cortenar. He's brothers with the deceased. Raoul and Ellis Cortenier. Look him in the eye. I'm sorry about your brother, Raoul. He wasn't my fucking brother. We just grew up on the same farm and got beat into place by the same sick fuck. Your brother did not deserve to go out like that. I promise I'll find his killer. Find his killer? Cop, his killer, stands right there, shitting his pants, and you're standing in the way, protecting them. I know what this tactic is, Silo Sam. You're gonna die for them, right here, today. He stares at you, eyes pink from the alcohol, fingers tapping the pistol. Big talk, but that leaf compactor won't leave his mind anytime soon. It's a small thing. But it got him off center. Hand eye coordination, legendary 14. Shoot Cortenire. Went up to 83%. Ikimas! A plume of smoke and fire erupts from the gun, and your hand goes numb from the explosion. Look at him. There's a hole in his cheek. Blood gushes as he stumbles backward, eyes filled with rage and disbelief. 
gurgling, muttering something unintelligible. His lips, moving, swollen with fear, are trying to say, shoot him, shoot him, but he can't. To your right, the killer raises his rifle and takes aim at you. His moves are steady, but the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. An Easter AR FA-7, built for taking out light armored vehicles. It will devastate you. Dodge the shot. Reaction, Reaction speed. speed. 42%. Let's fucking go. A low shot rings. You feel a tapping like rain on your chest plate. Armor. Heavy drops of rain. Please. Then the sound of dice rolling as the cuirass distributes the shot evenly Beautiful. from plate to plate. You got hit. The armor took most of it, but still your ribcage burns. Feels like blood is slowly seeping into your lungs. Kim does not have armor. God, please. The lieutenant says quietly, without trembling, he aims, face pale. He's aiming for the eye slot in Rude's helmet. Only spot. An extremely difficult shot. Ridiculous. He was 7 out of 10 on his shooting tests, Wooly. Roll the fucking dice. Two shots ring at once. <laughs> One from the lieutenant's pistol, and the other from the balls. Oh, he nailed it's aimed it. at the lieutenant, but, the but balls. it misses. You hear a scream behind you. Oh, Al Ghul, thank you. Kim, did he hit the rifleman? Blood gushes from the helmet's eye sockets as Rude staggers back, disoriented. The sounds coming from his helmet are not human. An unbelievable shot from the lieutenant. Right? Fucking insane. Who screamed? Glenn, dying in a pool of blood behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers. Oh, wow. She was right there, but it passed. Oh, God. Watch out. You see two crazed eyes stare at you through all the smoke and the panic. With blood gushing from his face, the man raises his pistol at you. Then he squeezes the trigger. Look him in the eye. The look of vengeance, framed in blood, lips shaking. This is the last thing he'll do on Earth. But he will do it. He is your end. Here it comes. Death. Impossible 20. Evade the shot. Nothing. A persisting darkness. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them, like a hellish play. A slender white shadow towering. Someone stands there, raising her pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. Scream immediately. He's gonna die. No, Kim. No, you say, and hand out your firearm to him. Your hand trembles and your eyes are full of fear. That's all it takes. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant moves like a spring unloaded. He grabs the gun from your bloody hand and fires behind him. You hear a faint scream, a woman's. Then the sound disappears, like someone pressed stop on the tape. The woman is gone. So is Kim. Then the whole world. Fall into total darkness. You see the lieutenant's familiar shape in the orange jacket. It turns double, then triple from the pain. You're in his room. Kim. Sunrise, Arabellon. The lieutenant says... He's in the middle of a freshly cleaned room, with a fan above his head like a halo. His face is covered in bruises. What happened? What happened? You shot the Major in the face. A firefight ensued. Is he dead? Yes. 
a bloodstained killer. <laughs> I warned them. I warned them. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you get when you let your son play with killers. Ow! That you did. The lieutenant looks at you with a peculiar expression. He then continues. Man of his word, this killer of killers. You were bleeding out by then. I think you said you lied about being an amnesiac, and you warned me. I was able to disarm one of them, the pull, before she got the jump on me. Thank you. Okay, so I have to mention, when it happened, you were right out there, on the balcony. Yeah, I was, yeah. That's because I'm a bad ass. <laughs> Trying to remain aloof. Everybody, I want you to take a look at this portrait. <laughs> look at it. Replay yep. the words bad ass in your head. <laughs> nice and slow. And we move on. It really took courage. Don't pick at him. If you say it as two different words like that, it sounds like there's something wrong with your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, fuck you too then. You have any more questions or stylistic pronunciation advice? What's gonna happen to the Hardy Boys now? I guess I'll take a closer look at our union members. There's bound to be some ambitious fellows there who'd love nothing more than advancing social democracy by busting some heads. I have heard there's an opening for your hardy boys. I have heard that the milk drinkers are not present in this group and your cranial types are substandard. <laughs> Perhaps I may raise the average by applying to be a hardy boy. <laughs> so what now? Judging by the side of you, I'd suggest crawling into bed with a bottle of whiskey in one hand and a big tit in the other. How about a clipboard and a gun flame? Close enough. Yeah, but pay Monica visiting Jandrock. She's got a knack for making men forget about their worries. Biggest pair of milkers in all Rebacho. That really yeah. is all. You both look like you could use some feminine company right now. Well, that is all about Monica. Thank you for your advice, Eugene, and you too, Alain. I do always appreciate a good use of the expression, milk. <laughs> Kim! Kim! Um, of course! I could have said chess beef ass! <laughs> Sweater cows! <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Sweater puppies! Just. Altuka! <laughs> It sincerely amuses him how hard these guys typecast um, themselves. Spider <laughs> ah ouais, si bull. <laughs> Ridiculous boys. Un jour, je serai de retour près de toi. Oh, wow. The graffito has been painted over the traces of the fight that took place here. It smells of blood and heavy fuel oil. Heavy fuel oil. Isn't that flammable? Yo. Wait. Really? Step back, Lieutenant. Set the graffito on fire. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, but you have to do it. The fuel oil catches fire immediately with an ominous hiss. A bright orange flash across the surface of the letters. Black smoke rises from the burning message. One day I'll return before you. What if the words are not directed at the people of Martinez, or even the coalition aerostatics above the city? They're meant for something above even those. Disco Elysium. The lieutenant has taken a small step back. He looks at your face illuminated by the flames and nods silently. Then the fire falters. The flames warmed him too. Not at all in a bad way. Let's go to that island. 
pale swallows all. Hard to disagree with the sentiment, considering what we just survived. Right? Maybe a tribute to the deceased would make more sense now. He nods in woeful agreement, then closes his eyes for half a beat. When he opens them, it's clear he has something to say to you. Detective, I have a few questions, if you don't mind. No, I don't mind. He nods, eyes still on the doom crier above on the arm holding out the portent of the cold air. Why did you do it? Don't you think we should make the most of the short time we have left? I don't think anything. I'm just asking questions. One more question, if you don't mind. Was it all worth it? What are you talking about? You managed to gather quite a fortune, kicked off by underpaying a young artist. And don't forget about the way you conned an honest pawn shop owner. Oh, what? Body. Oh. You had to pay her so little. Otherwise, you wouldn't have made any profit. And if you don't make a profit, you don't have money to invest. The lieutenant speaks as if you're rich. A common misconception, especially if you count the tax. No, we've got a long way to go before we can feel financially comfortable. The hustle, the hustle never, never stops. stops. Vision quest. Now, <laughs> are they if, still there? If this was anime, we would be going to Measurehead, and Measurehead would be like, despite all the things I said, <laughs> good luck to you in the coming conflicts. And then you'll have a little heart to heart with Measurehead and his big old dumb racism. <laughs> And you'll find a way to see, you know, you're like, he's a super evil racist villain, but the true evil is over there and we need to team up to fight them. And then we find out that there was an evil possessing measure head that made him racist the whole time. Oh, and that's, no. We got to go fight that. From which haplo group? <laughs> From which? The moon. <laughs> the moon group. You didn't think about that. Didn't see the moon people coming. Oh, man. You'd have a little fucking heart-to-heart -heart with Measurehead if this were anime. Babushka? Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? I, I got shot! <laughs> <laughs> Just... <laughs> sh scream in 50 cent. <laughs> I got shot in the face! I, even I can see that. I told you not to bring your trouble with you, policeman. We've got troubles of our own here. Mm. Please don't turn into a game of Cobra Triangle. <laughs> Have you made it was so all the necessary hard. preparations? Closed all your accounts? Remember what the net picker said? It's a small tank. You won't be going back and forth on this. You take the engine, Kim. I'll hold the boombox. <laughs> what? You heard me. Don't make me repeat myself. Fine. Why not? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Plug in a mic and just start freestyling into it. Portis head? Vibes? More Chiba?
They said the thing, yeah. Light motif. <sighs> yeah. We were listening to it the whole time. If you are feeling tired, I will keep watch. You could use some rest for what's ahead. Maybe a little shut eye, just an hour. Okay. You face the concrete wall. There's less light there in the dark corner. Like a dog, you lie there. him oh that's one walk into the water now we might be dreaming you see her footprints on the water Dolores Day the innocence of humanism internationalism and the welfare state turns around to face you. She has an airship airbag in her hand. She seems to be in a hurry. We might be dreaming. You think? I've heard of you before. You're the voice on the phone. Oh, Harry, you shouldn't have done that. She shakes her head very slowly, her white hair brushing her shoulders. You do what? Call me like that. You ruined it. There was still a chance. You should have waited longer. She would have called you instead. Suggestion. You are... You're done. You're out. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a weird suggestion. It wasn't me. It was my hand. My fingers called you. Just the battle... The battle with the irrationality within... Yeah. ...that can't be controlled. Why would you... Die? You could, couldn't... You just... You lost the fight. They shouldn't have... They really shouldn't. I was in Morova already. Safe. In the warmth of the night. Wrapped in my future love. There, I think of you less and less. Whole weeks go by without me remembering you. But you said I have a vast soul. You'll always come back to it. We both said a lot of things. We were very young. It was her. I can feel it. I can see it in her tender, long fingers, in her wrists. Her hand wrote it. You need to recite it to her. For effect. All of it. No summaries. Yeah, put a stake through your heart. She'll get hurt too. Collateral damage. Pull the pin. She won't get hurt. She'll bend out of the way. 
I have it right here. Let me refresh your memory. Let, let's take a oh my God. trip down memory lane. <laughs> Every morning when I step out and you're asleep behind me, I find a little piece of sadness in me. I carry it in my chest down Voyager Road. Every, every step I take it grows, until by the time I reach the fuel station, it has filled me completely. I step on the light rail and look back, something something, uh, bow collector, I know it would be like this, un until I walk back to you. You, you, every step I take will get lighter. It almost makes me run. Sometimes I do. I can't believe I met you. I can't believe the happiness I feel with you. You have a vast, vast soul, and I will always, always, always come back to it. Okay, stop. Yes. Are you happy now? Suggestion medium. How is that even? That is the reddest check. Yeah, I'm uncomfortable. Your Oscar's in the mail, by the way. With your feet trembling from the steps you took, tepid and fearful, you stand against her, her body close to you radiating warmth. With your eyes closed, you move your lips on her mouth. She is not kissing you back. But I succeeded. This was not about failure or success. <laughs> this was always going to be horror. I should not have suggested it, and you should not have listened to it. <laughs> Jesus. What the f Fuck! Did you think that check was gonna be Harry? She slides her hands down her chest and onto her lower stomach and smiles. I'm pregnant. It's his. The man I heard on the phone. Yes, he did it. I terminated yours. Don't you remember, you poor fuck? You poverty-stricken fuck. No, this has to end. Do the last one. Yeah. See you tomorrow. That's a fucking closer. You're up quick. How was your sleep? Let's solve the fucking case. There's a rain soaked mattress on a concrete slab only half covered by the crumbling roof. At the head of it, double embrasures, firing slits like two eyes in the wall. Inspect the wall. There's a firing slit in the wall in front of you, like a little window. Look through the hole in the concrete. The springs screech as you lean on the mattress and crane your neck to look out. Trepidation, a tingling feeling in your stomach. A small piece of Martinez coastline opens up in the square in front of you, like a tiny landscape painting. One kilometer across the water, the ruins look familiar. On the left? A towering skyscraper, its top floors shaved off by artillery fire, capeside apartments, Rue de saint Lane, 33A and 33B. On the right? The red chimney and collapsed back of the four-story tenement in front of the whirling in rags, Rue de saint Gislaine, 10, the doomed commercial area. Man, between the two. The box-shaped silhouette of the whirling in rags. Its sloped roof, a tiny fleck of light catches your eye on the rooftop, sunlight reflecting off the upstairs window of Clasia's room. Motherfucker. 
What does that mean? Do you have line of sight to the window? <laughs> More than that. Kim, with a pair of binoculars, I would be able to see inside the room. A pair of binoculars? Or a scope of a rifle? You'd be prone, lying on a mattress, barrel resting on the embrasure. I think we have it. The origin of the shot. This is the sniper's nest. He pats you on the back. Three small pats in a row. This had someone that is someone right there with the bench. Yep. And then you got the gun. Who is that? An old man wearing tracksuit trousers leans on the frame stock of his rifle. He gathers a big ball of spit in his mouth. Then spits it out into the extinguished fire before him. He raises his black eyes, hooded by creased eyelids, to meet yours. He's practically tearing up from spite. Hatred got the best of him a long time ago. This man hates everything. How'd you know I was coming? Reactionary rock and roll music. Playing on the water. <laughs> Gestures north. <laughs> Well then, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Told you we shouldn't play sad FM. You are a glorified night watchman. This is a service rifle. I can only lay it down before an enemy commander of corresponding rank. I am an enemy commander of rank. The words, I am an enemy commander, sound cold as iron from your lungs. The old man still hugs his gun. And what rank would that be, dog? Lieutenant Double Yefreder. A big wheel of the 4th Regiment of the Pederast Army. <laughs> to hell with it. It's a walking stick anyway. It's out of bullets. The old man lays the rifle down carelessly, then stares at it just lying there. See this right here? Yeah. This is what Renee was fighting. Oh, yeah, okay. This is what Renee was fighting. <laughs> Could you imagine having this conversation with Kuno? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, no! The right type and the right calibre. You have the dream, you wake up, you walk into the water, and it's Kuno in the road. <laughs> what the fuck you doing here? <laughs> Fucking pig! Were you expecting the water's day, were you? <laughs> this is Locust City? I'm a fucking artist! <laughs> Shit, okay. See you tomorrow night, pig! This looked very much like the murder weapon. It could be used against them to get a confession. In time. Who are you? My name is Josef Lilianovich Dross. Political Commissar of the 114th Anti-Aircraft Division of the 4th Army of the Commune of Revachol. I am a deserter, a partisan, and a prisoner of war. This is my term of surrender. His eyes turn to the reeds again, dead and dull. I just had a thought back to the story of the Japanese soldier who yeah you're yeah, thinking I thought the same you thing, thought yeah. the same thing yeah, too yeah, huh yeah. May the 13th 08 44 years ago the horizon was black with coalition airships their petroleum rose to the sky and it looked like like it formed the clouds storm clouds when they started shelling it was Dark magic. I would imagine it gets tremendously difficult mentally to live in isolation. Very much so. Traitors. It's better alone. I watch the people of this city turn the lights back on more and more each year. Ruins. 
glimmering in the dark, like a fucking merry-go-round. Enjoying relatively comfortable lives, getting used to living under their oppressors, uh, oppressors over a fucking moral intern that took over and controls everything, and in the end, yeah. all that fire fades, and the generation that was once fighting becomes complacent and passive. And inclement and, and incremental progress replaces, yeah. <laughs> replaces what once was this fire. And he sits there for the whole time and watches it happen. At night, I used a dinghy. I only went after dark then. When I got to the city, I stayed underground. Patrols, you lot, the commons too, they'd started snitching. In the city, you move underground? From bunker to bunker. Not anymore. No one cares now. I don't even have to hide. They think I'm another antisocial vagrant. I could walk straight into that town if I wanted. I just... He falls silent, his gaze fixed on the shacks huddled together across the water. The weapons cache under saint Land 22B in the basement. Have you been there? So you finally found it. There must have been a small squadron's worth of arms in there. Elmer Graves, right? Oh, he looks at you, then pulls the raincoat tighter around his neck. They were damaged beyond use. I know. So you've been there? Sleeping. <laughs> Some nights. I'm out scrounging on others. Those my graves were shit, even before they corroded. Some had bullets in the chamber, however. You feel the dots connecting. Little dots on the map he's walked across. A story about time moving on with a soldier out of time who doesn't have or doesn't understand how or why the battle is over is an incredibly interesting one and uh, is not dissimilar to uh, a story that myself and a friend wrote and actually were uh, talked about in a, an episode of Wooly We'll Figure It Out. You said this is your termless surrender. You're with the RCM. The coalition appointed mob that enforces bourgeois morals in Revachol. A so called Lieutenant W. Freighter. We enforce the law. We keep the animals from killing each other. You're the RCM. You represent the Moralist International. The enemies of humanity who took this city. I represent their adversary, Le Parti Communiste dans ce land. Take me to them as a prisoner of war. I have relinquished my weapon. I can no longer serve. No superiors can relieve me of my duty. You bulldoze them all to a mass grave for trying to free humanity. <laughs> his hand shakes and he breaks into a coughing fit. A spray of blood from his mouth on the black charcoal in the fire pit. Rene, the royalist on the coast, said, You never signed the Revacholian instrument of surrender. Liberal reactionaries signed that instrument. Traitors who should have been burned alive. I answer to the Communist Party. Tring, tring, tring. Hey Reggie, what's that sound? <laughs> Hammer and sickle. Are you sure? It sounded like failure to me. <laughs> oh my god. I've used it to kill people. Interesting. During or after the war? There is no after <sighs> the war. Class war is never over. <sighs> he shakes his head and smiles, his teeth rotten black. Class war is never over. I'm just going to assume there is a fucking plethora of the deserter did nothing wrong. <laughs> Photos and memes ready to go. It's a real gun. Not like your little musketeer pistol. I've seen you prance around with that. Jumping hoops for the liberals. You look like imbeciles. Why don't you ask them to give you real weapons? 
<laughs> Going against automatic rifles with these toy guns. Of course you got those boys killed. Mm. Damn, he saw you. He's watched it happen. Shit. So he saw you. Okay. So what? Don't let it divert you. We saved a lot of them. Their leader, Titus. We handle that situation. Stop changing the subject. We have the murder weapon. Okay then. You know what? You're right. I'm convinced this made the shot. Should we call it? The lieutenant looks at the weapon demonstratively. You think we have the murder weapon? 4.46 jacketed ammunition. Modified for range. We have it. This is it. I'm calling it. We have the murder weapon. Good. The lieutenant takes out his notebook and draws a single line. This feels good, doesn't it? Tearing things up like this. When you have the murder weapon, you have the killer. I had them in my sights. Both of them. Him and the whore. I was breathing with them in phase and I pulled the trigger and flew on the air until I landed in his mouth he begins to smile I didn't think I had a shot like that in me anymore I did I saw him kneel there with his mouth full of death and that stupid look on his face and his dick still in her the smile quivers then what Nothing. I went to sleep. Next morning there were Maybells everywhere. The world was white. Or what's left of it anyway. My last spring here. I knew the fascists would come to avenge their own. And so they did. Mr. Dras, are you aware you're confessing to murder? The lieutenant asks after a second of silence. Yes. A single word is all he gives. Are you always looking through the scope of a rifle? I'm just trying to understand. A rifle scope has the best magnification. And if you don't like it? You pull the trigger. Yes. Think of it as a form of critique. <laughs> he looks you in the eye. Oh, that's a lie. <laughs> oh, that's a fucking lie. What specifically did you not like about what you saw the night of the murder? Them. Fucking. I didn't like that. He looks at the charred wood. So you were jealous? Jealousy is a reactionary concept. I didn't like the Reaver enjoying himself. Drugged out, soothed in the arms of a young woman. I wanted him to die so he could not enjoy life anymore. And I wanted to see his head explode. That too. She should know better than to hold a child murderer between her thighs. I knew he'd be there for one more second. Writhing. That's all it takes for the bullet to reach his head. Now that I think of it, I wasn't aiming for his mouth. I wanted his brains to spill out on her. But you can't have everything. He shrugs. This man has seen past her, like you did. And now, he longs to see her covered in blood. To punish her. The worst of them is the blood-drenched Sucreon on her yacht, licking her lips. The old whore's gone now. Her gun-toting porcelain men are dead. So, actually, no. The worst is that old cock parading around in his uniform, throwing balls all day. <laughs> it's not enough that the racists and liberals are dancing on our graves. 
The old loyalist ghouls still parade the ruins, too. Renee lives. Dude. What does this conversation look like? When you're doing a playthrough that internalizes this and goes all the way in on the fucking fash. What does this conversation even turn into? I imagine a fight. (laughs) Like, I imagine a life bar just shows up and it becomes, like, round two. (laughs) Fucking Mega Man boss. (laughs) You know? I mean, Kim's not around at that point. He's not sticking around your fucking racist ass. Nope. So you just show up. Alone. The epitome of everything, or, or possibly with child in tow. <laughs> yep. The epitome of everything that he wants dead. The disco whores are too much. Hatred shuts down his brain's language center, leaving only a nonsensical sputter. Disco whores? Whores. <laughs> Did you hear Christ. the gargle in his throat? We lost two million lives toppling that mode of government. And those grotesque statues, too. Hundreds of them. But it's still there. What a keen remark. Yes, it is, isn't it? It's still there. Because Do you know why? Say, because the king is holy and his statues are indestructible. But mean it ironically. No. Cynical design cockroaches like you erected a new, ironic version of it. We did. We tore it down with honest working class plastic explosives. But there it is again, grinning. Rene lives? Every fucking morning for 34 years. Throwing that ball. One ball against the other. I've always loathed that. <laughs> that is not a working class game. I don't care what they say on Radio June. He grinds his teeth in rage. And he wore his uniform. And yet you didn't pull the trigger. Royalist ghouls played like it was life itself. Click clack across the water each day. And that uniform, like a parrot plumage. I won't even mention that he's a traitor to his race. A patank maniac race traitor. Fat and plump, like a pheasant. Just begging to be popped off. Please, Mr. Truss, shoot me. A grin stretches across his face and he says very softly, This is exactly what I was wondering. Not yet. I like to look at him strut around, place the crosshair on his medals, right on his face, and just fiddle the trigger. Think about it. Let the bonbon melt in my mouth. Save the treat for later. The lieutenant asks cheerfully. Hearing it may destabilize him. Are you sure you've gotten everything from him? René is dead. He died of old age a couple of days ago. No. Yeah? Absolutely. I waited too long. I waited too long and now he's dead? The old communite looks at you, his blackberry eyes shaking in disbelief. How's the candy? I'm sorry, Mr. Dras. I understand you knew him for a long time. They're all dead now. Fuck it. If he really wanted to kill him so bad, he would have done. There must have been a thousand black bays on Mm -hmm. these islands. Mm -hmm. His health ailing. But he didn't do it. You had a thousand chances to kill him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's true. And I blew them all. What does it matter now? He's gone. Ancient dust. You cared about him. All human beings care about each other. I cared for 
seeing his head explode. Now, God damn this one. He's not okay. This is just another black day in a row of black days. Something strange is keeping him together, making him endure. Legendary 14. Assess the body language. What strikes you about this gaunt man is not the stomach pain or the cough Thank you. or the malnutrition. For a man who spent 44 years hidden in the urban wild, he's surprisingly okay. Indeed. He speaks fluidly. His movements are rapid, if erratic. His voice, despite the cough, is there. It is capable of expressing complicated ideas. Above all, he seems animated. By what? It's a mystery. This animation comes at a cost too. Erratic hand gestures, thought processes cut off like threads as he just stares at the logs or the reeds. He also suffers mood swings bubbling to the surface, unconstrained by his nervous system. Dementia? You've seen demented people before. This feels similar, yet different. When his thoughts move, they are lucid, keen even, not senile. You go and transport the prisoner. I'll be here. I can escort him to the pier with you. No need to be polite. I'll do it. This world? What are you talking about? Is this... us? His voice drowns out in a sudden gush of wind. The wind is cold from the east. Your skin is crawling suddenly. <laughs> A delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds, limb by limb, to then just stand there, moving its scythe like arms in ghostly silence. What is that? What are you talking about? The old man looks at the reeds, then at you. The giant stick insect. There's nothing there. He looks confused. The stick insect is over three meters tall. It looks straight at you with its tiny pinprick <laughs> eyes and its grotesquely small head. You got some sense of timing, Phasmid. There is, I see it. Tell me what you see, damn it. I can't make out one small thing in the reeds. Kim, can you see it? I can see it. Four simple words, thank God. If he can see, then you're not insane. Approach carefully. Electrochemistry 2, very high check. Lena's childhood experience. Your corpse will be marked by something the miracle way out in the west laid the pheromone on thick it's true morel did spray us with that weird thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. slowly with your breath held you take two small steps toward the phasmid the creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Like laughter, a sort of happiness. Sweat drips from your brow, soaking your chest. You reek of it, your chemicals. The tracheal system on the creature's abdomen expands in front of you to take in and expel air. It's smelling you. Inland Empire, tell me, what are you doing? Spoke to the hangman, did not give up on Phasmid, knows of Parthenogenesis. And then one day, I got in. <laughs> We're in! Even when you're sleeping, 
And when you wake, you carry it around on your neck. The eyes open that cannot help but swallow more behind the mirror. I feel great. Mute empathy for you. It's hell. I changed my mind. I want to be you. <laughs> It was very disorienting at first, but I'm keeping my shit together. Ah. I want to lie. <laughs> I really do. But we've compressed our shit. That must be incredibly hard. The Arthropods are in silent and meaningless, all of you. Know that we're watching. When you're tired, when the vision spins out of control, the insects will be looking on, rooting for you. And when you fall, we will come to raise you up. Bud from you, banner-like, blossom from you and carry you apart in a sky funeral, in honor of your passing. But not me, because I'm just a leaf eater. In honor of your will, Lieutenant Nefreiter that you kept from falling apart in the face of sheer terror day after day second by second oh thank god volition chimed in still there inland empire is huge it is a large massive deep chasm to fall down and you never know when you've seen the bottom yeah, of it you can lose yourself but no matter where you are volition is with you and he's gonna set you straight so we're still going okay. <laughs> we're actually talking to this thing. Detective. Yes? Arriving. On the scene. I'm a detective. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. What were you born to detect? <laughs> also that. The killer. I was born to detect you. Damn. Now that's a fucking pickup line if I've ever heard one. <laughs> Get in my master ball. No wonder Dora's gone. You're destroying him. I'm very slowly. And only because he won't go away. It is meant to keep them from noticing me. To interfere with the picture in your head. But he has looked at me for too long. And I am destroying him. I went, I went unnoticed by the first settlers and the land surveyors, and the suzerain. Also by the soldiers of the revolution and the officials of the, of the occupation. Even the Seminese islanders who came here first. But they did not say. They did not stay. Have not seen me. I hid from the kips. Oh, no. <laughs> oh my god, no! What? No! No! Vasmid. No! Vasmid. <laughs> Oh, oh no! Her nationalist boys are through the room! <laughs> 350 years of collecting XP, Wooly! 350 years! <laughs> Shit! Somewhere, uh, somewhere across the coast, in a building not so far away, a crypto fascist laughs as he sips his tea from one of his mugs. <laughs> <laughs> are you the miracle? Body. Oh. <laughs> oh, fast bit. Damn. <laughs> Damn, fast mid. Why you gotta do me like that? Yeah. Oh. Why couldn't Professor Oak give you to me at the start of the adventure? Why do we have to wait so long? Why do we have to wait this time? Your ex was trash, trash. <laughs> <laughs> she was ratchet anyway. Okay, Kim. Take the shot. Okay. The shrill flash of the camera cuts the air like the blade of a sword. The phasmid freezes in its bright light. 
head turned toward the lieutenant, hypnotized by the flash. It stands frozen before you. Good shot, Kim. Undeniably. That's a fucking Pulitzer right there. Look at your finger. You were right. It glistens with some kind of moisture. The creature in front of you stays frozen. Now, why would I lick my finger? <laughs> we have been straight edge for the entire fucking game. <laughs> this now? I think we've earned a lick. It tastes like sugar. Very faint. The anthropod towers above you. Tufts of reeds pointed from limb and head alike. Disengage slowly. It left some loot. Damn. Look at all that speed. Boss defeated. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, the helmet! <laughs> oh wow! Kim made that shot. Yep. Through the slit. Half light up, suggestion down. Well, your half light would need it. Oh, it's weird with the code, eh? Very. That's. <laughs> That's the hat. That's the, that's the it's helmet. A, it's a hat. That's, that's it is. It's a hat. Weird looking. A little? Nope. Look what the tide brought in. Says the man without sunglasses. Suddenly his, expre his expression changes and he tilts his head. Jean Vicmar. No wig. No sunglasses. You know, I've, I've made up my mind. Your voice actor is just not cutting it. Mm. Your accent is real, but your 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 line delivery is just not cutting it. Okay, fucking curly uh, ass. What what are, what, are, what are they called? The, the nose and the glass. The fucking uh, the the. <sighs> ah, it's over. I failed. <laughs> <laughs> Check failed. Check failed. <laughs> The, the glass speed, the noses, and the glasses. <laughs> the fucking stupid the thing he was wearing. <laughs> I'm just gonna call him. You know, the, the Grouch Groucho Marx. Just, just, just try to call him Groucho Marx. Good job. Luke. What's the shit, kid? You, shit, kid. That's you. Despite all that you've done, the deserter, the phasmid, the case. Despite all that I've done. No. Because of all that you've done. How'd you know I was here? The cafeteria manager you fucked over told us where you went. Turn to face the general direction of the whirling and yell, Damn you, cafeteria manager! You, you betrayed, betrayed me for the last time! Speaking of which, <laughs> the giant aerographito in front of the building, <laughs> the one that's burning, did you do that? Yeah, I lit it on fire. It was a poetic gesture. Not that you'd understand. Look at your fucking stats. I knew it. Didn't I tell you, Trant? I told you it was our shit kid. The line is from Lu Jiatun's Mirova 82, isn't it? About girl child communism, the titular returning character to ghost the apparition of. Good Hello. choice, Harry. Yeah, um, first, who's Guillaume Bevy? Oh, that's an interesting story, actually. Guillaume Bevy is a police reporter who joined our team. He was really good. Then he left because he lost faith in your ability to lead the unit. Other people have left too. Good, smart people. People we won't get back. Only me and this really patient patrol officer are still here. And Trump, because I'm forcing him to stay. Is this Guillaume Bevy blonde and partial to sunglasses? Jean, with as little respect as possible, this entire conversation does not matter. And I feel like we are being walled with the most trivial possible fucking conversational boss fight you could throw after what we just went through. I'm just hoping we use that bullet. Holy shit, man. Is this Guillaume Bevy blonde with sunglasses like you were? 
See? There. He's getting it. I was impersonating him. Look at me, Angie baby. It was going to be funny. But then, you really did have brain damage. So, not so much anymore. He sincerely thought it was going to be amusing for both of you. Okay, so what does the unit do? Do? It's a major crimes unit. We clear the desk of cases so Precinct 41 doesn't look like the worst station in town. We are shit here now, Harry. Because of you. You know, we were told that we rolled into town with a team of killers. Mm-hmm. Doesn't quite sound like that, but... <laughs> <laughs> They're your pussy. Or what remains of it. Hand-picked. Hand-lost. Where have you been all this time? There was a mercenary tribunal. I got shot. Hard. Mm -hmm. Not soft. God damn it, Harry. He shifts his weight, crosses his arms, and looks you in the eye. You better make this good. You told us to fuck off. You said we are cramping your style. You're a detective god. Fuck everything. All will burn. Detect or die. <laughs> so you let me face a squad of train killers alone just to teach me a lesson. <laughs> Why didn't you detect or die then? Oh, you think it was cool? You saying that? Aesthetic somehow? You were crying when we got here. Breaking things. You said we were going into the abyss. None of us wanted to see the abyss. So we fucked off. Like you told us to. Now we discuss that. What the fuck did you do to our motor carriage? Why is it there, Harry? Tequila Sunset. I also jumped the canal, by the way. <laughs> ha ha ha! Ho ho ho! Tequila sunset? Jump the canal. So funny, Harry. Thank you for fucking me. Thank you for destroying 45,000 real of police property that's coming out of my payslip. You know that, right? Bitch, you You're are two seconds from not I'm gonna pay till I die. You are two seconds from not even being able to see my face because of the light bending I'm about to do with this net worth. <laughs> <laughs> he did everything he could. We did everything we could. The company hired and vetted mercenaries. Lieutenant Dubois could between them and the locals. Here comes the cavalry. Or Swiss? He did so at considerable <laughs> risk to his own life. He was shot and survived only because of his armor. We stopped an execution, not a negotiation. The loss of life was minimal compared to what it could have been. You spent the week with him on this case. What is your take? On um, the case? On Lieutenant Euphretor Dubois. Well, the drinking, the gun losing, also losing the badge. That's so true. Although he has not been drinking on the job this week. Get fucked. See? One week. Then there's the apocalypse thing. At first I thought it was a joke, but it's not. He actually thinks the world is about to end in a bloodletting or gloaming. We are about to become vapor, even. Well, well, well. If it isn't the consequences of my own clicks. <laughs> oh, we're reaping now. Uh, we are reaping. It's hard, especially in light of his political views. Detective Dubois is, <laughs> as you may know, a hustler. He grinds. He makes the real. He's a visionary and a money engineer, which is just other still. He is also a Mazovian socio-economist who believes in liquidating the ruling class. How he reconciles these two points of view, I do not know. But he is vocal on both of them. A uh, walking contradiction, you know, it's a, what makes the beauty of us. Who isn't a walking contradiction? <laughs> Hippocrates, that's what they call me. <laughs> and then there's the motor carriage in the sea. Something I was not present for. But despite all this, he is a great detective. One of the best I have seen, in fact. I love you, Kim. <laughs> he can talk human beings into telling him everything. Oh. And he doesn't stop. In all the time I've spent with him, he has not once stopped pursuing leads, however far-fetched and tangential. Activate! madly driven well except that one time when he stopped to sing karaoke 
Which, by the way, I have to disagree with you, Mr. Vikmar, was a valiant effort. Yes. He really sang his heart out. Yes. Yes. Kim fucking K. Yo. Drop the mic. Okay, he did something. Yo, I'm so glad he went back to the karaoke. Yo, fuck you, Jean. I hate you. You're disgusting. No soul. Other than that one time, he has tirelessly worked on the case, and he solved it. We have a confession, a murder weapon, and the perpetrator, locked on the island right now, awaiting transportation. He apprehended a straggler who stayed hidden for 50 years, ever since the revolution, who's probably committed other murders over those years. Oh, and he also discovered a new species. Uh-huh. <laughs> what? Anything else? What? A new species? A colossal stick insect. It was on the island, camouflaged as a reed. It uh, unfolded from the reed. I think we may be dealing with the insulindian phasmid. That's right. As you can see, it's about three meters tall. In fact, we think it may be the largest land invertebrate <laughs> ever discovered. <laughs> the verbal beatdown has never been so airtight, so thorough, so absolutely all-encompassing from every possible angle. Byakugan style. Perfect. I... I... 360 degree. Perfect. We haven't. There hasn't been a shutdown like this since Kotor 2. <laughs> Boom shakalaka! <laughs> Fucking hell is that? Is this somehow connected to the case? The old man was not aware of the phasmid's presence, exhibiting a strange, atypical dementia. He fell into a stupor after its appearance. He became near catatonic. So it is connected. Oh, what? what? What was that? Huh? Oh, oh okay. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Hmm? Okay, cool. Nice, Jean. Nice input. Squall? Hmm? Hmm? Huh? Chrono? Cloud? I must say, this is absolutely extraordinary. It's... I don't even have words for it. He killed the mes mercenary in an act of jealousy. Jealousy? I thought this Lilianovich was an old man. To have been hiding for 50 years, 70 oh, something? Oh, he was active. A strange psychosexual fixation. Aggravated, possibly, by proximity to the phasmid and its chemicals. He himself gave a political reason. Said he had killed an enemy God combatant. Damn it, Kim. Out of so our fucking good. Thank Crunch. you. Thank you. I would not have been able to do it alone. <laughs> like, thank you for being here. Well, because on it, well, okay. If you want to break the fourth wall on that one, the game says, pick one! And then Kim goes, it's actually a mixture of all. Yeah. Yeah. But you're not allowed to Thank say you. that because <laughs> you suck. So pick one of these things to sound stupid and simplified. And then once you're done, yeah. we're going to come in with a nuanced answer that reflects reality. Absolutely. But anyway. <laughs> also, we have ballistics from the gun, matching the bullet found in the dead mercenary's head. And two officers on the scene that Mr. Dross confessed to. Mm -hmm. It's a clean win. Oh, it's way more than that. She's on our side. There was a dead man on the boardwalk. He was missing and we found him. Yes, yes. Fallen through a gap in the boardwalk. Drunk. You knew I found him. The body was transported to Precinct 41, our morgue. I had Tilbrook and Mullins take care of funeral arrangements and uh, family stuff. Oh, I took care of family stuff too. I did a really good job. You're not the only cop in the world, Harry. This all comes back to us. Still, good work with the missing person, detective. Thank you, it's Officer Minot. for you. No denying it. So what the fuck do you have to say? I don't want to, but you discovered a new species and solved the murder. He shrugs. So I have to. Jude? Anything that ends the trial is okay with me. A quick nod. You haven't been drinking, she thinks. So maybe this time. Agreed. The public relations potential of this is too valuable to let go. You know how I was saying earlier 
that the game really makes it feel like it wants you to drink and take drugs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, eh, I'm probably missing out on a mechanic here. Yeah. And I, and I realized that it's going to fuck with my roles and the stats because clearly everyone is saying, dude, just take the drugs, uh -huh. though. And I'm like, nah, uh -huh. I'm going to just ride it out. Yes, Wooly. How beautiful is the view from this high ground, Reggie? Wooly, you can gloat all you want. <laughs> you see the sunset? This is clean. Tequila how, sunrise. How beautiful is the sunset? <laughs> Who am I? Who are you? You're a gym teacher, Harry. I'm a what? Before you were a cop, you were a gym teacher in Coron. Good morning, Mr. Dubois. Dude, you couldn't even lift these barbells. <laughs> All right, kids, go run your laps. <laughs> Mr. Dubois, what's that? What's that smell? Run your fucking laps. <laughs> Harry. It explains everything. The running around, the jumping, the bicep girth, your inexplicable facial hair. The no. collection of <laughs> fallen sportswear I've amassed. Your love of retro style dance music. How you're able to perform a 360 degree spin kick. Oh my god, contact Mike! Yeah! <laughs> of course. Contact Mike. You forgot your goddamn clothes again. See, the problem is... The problem is, you don't know nothing about Contact Mike. <laughs> now you sit here next to me while I lecture you for the entire period about Contact Mike while everyone else gets to play volleyball. Hold, hold on, let me get the TV and the VCR. <laughs> put on a tape of Contact Mike. Ah! Versus Vicious Vincent. Lieutenant Kitsuragi, what will you do now? Well... First, I will go back to my station and write the most detailed report anyone has ever seen. It will have to be good to cover all these. Then I will have a serious talk with my captain. I mean, dude, at this point, just write a book. Maybe Pleasance will sell it. We just stopped a small-scale war. Something is happening to Revachol. Want to do that at Station 41? Talk to Captain Price? I'd rather not ruffle the feathers of two captains with my doom-mongering. No, no, I meant... Investigate. Come work in Precinct 41. Work with Price? I'm flattered, but I don't know if I... Flattered? You're Lieutenant Kitsuragi. We would be flattered if you even considered. I would have to tie things up in GRIH first. But, I mean, whatever is coming, Jamrock will be more central to it than the harbor. The lieutenant turns very serious all of a sudden. And we also have a huge caseload, Lieutenant. Piles that we need to get back to. Mountains, even. She says with a smile. I do like the sound of that. He returns her smile. He's really considering it. Hey! Looks like we'll work on that Kinema after all. Yeah! Super dumb. You ready? I'm ready. Fuck it. Let's go. Dawson? Yes. McLean? Yes. I will stand. No. Lickmere? Yes. Dubois? Of course. Really? Nick Scott Lee looks up from the list. I hear he's quite unstable. You say that like it's a bad thing. Captain Ptolemy Price points his pen at the doctor. It's dim in his office, and the curtains are drawn. Harry's our man. He'll pull through, and when he does, He'll side with Revachon. Understood. Gottlieb returns to the list. Minot? Of course. Wonderful. Then can we please just go back to Jamrock now? Who the fuck else? But Harry Dubois. Hey. Put my dumb helmet on. <laughs> Yo, Jean wishes he looked like you. Granny's gone. Okay, I thought that was a handshake for a second. But I am shot. It's true. 
Thanks for the help. What a week. Hey. <laughs> A lot of drugs in my pocket to put in the evidence locker. A whole lot. It doesn't take hyperbole. It's not a qualifying statement. It's just a sheer fact that this is the best written game I've ever played. And that nothing even remotely holds a candle in my experience. I don't think of anything else either. There's nothing that comes this close. And even the things that do have incredible moments like the narration builds something that the assets did not and it's it's a book it is constant it is a book it's sustained and it's captivating the whole way just i can't think of anything else that does it like that unbelievable like i was saying earlier i was like yo 13 Sentinels was great. This is... You can't compare anything to this collision. Unbelievable. It's really great. Holy fucking shit. The angle we're looking at is the sniper's pr- from the oh, POV. It's the, it's the view from the... Uh, Details, my friend. Uh, Nothing left behind. Masterpiece. Yep, that's, masterpiece. You know, like I'll just take my ten on ten. This is this is what you're. This is this is the whole. This yeah. is it. Take my ten on ten. You can have it. The school is you. There's there's Joyce's Harbor. There's the apartments. There's the whirling. There's the blockade. There's the village. <sighs> it's all there. It's all there. Time to travel into the pale. Yeah. 